So in calculus, whenever we're talking about you know, differentiating or integrating a function, we're usually talking about continuous functions. Now, so a continuous function intuitively is just a curve that you can draw without lifting your pencil off the paper. So for example, this curve over here is continuous because you can you know, put your pencil down here and just draw it the whole way. Whereas here, you'd have to lift your pencil up at these, at these points. So we can also say that for a continuous function, then when we're taking the limit of delta y over delta x, you know, then as delta x approaches 0, then delta y must approach 0 as well. Now, for example, if you look at, say, that at this point, you know, the, the dot was filled in over here on the bottom instead of on the top. So if we were looking at the limit of delta y over delta x at this point, so x plus delta x would be somewhere over here, right? And then as delta x approaches 0, you know, it would be moving to the left. But as delta x approaches 0, delta y would not approach 0. You know, delta y would approach whatever the height difference is between these two points. So this function is not continuous at this point. Now a more precise definition of continuity is a function is continuous at a point if the function is defined at that point and the value of the function at that point must equal the limit at that point. Now so here the function is defined at this x value but the limit does not exist because the limits from the left side and the right side are different. And at these points, the function is not defined at you know, these x values, even though here the limit exists and here the limit does not exist. So the, these three types of continuities are called, this is an, is an asymptote, this is a jump, and this is a hole. So those are the three most common types of discontinuities. And so even if a function is continuous, it can still be not differentiable at some point. And so, for example, these three points, this is called a corner, this is a cusp, and this is a vertical tangent line. So at any sharp points, it's not going to be differentiable because if you just try to draw a tangent line at the sharp point, you could draw you know, infinitely many ta different tangent lines because it's easy to draw a line that only touches the curve at this corner here. So because it's not a unique tangent line to the curve at this point, it's not differentiable. And same for this cusp over here. And at a vertical tangent line, then the, the derivative can exist because the slope of this tangent line is undefined because if the change in x is 0 then you can't divide by 0 to find the slope of this tangent line. So now let's look at some properties of differentiation. So you know, the, the derivative of a constant times a function you know, is the same thing as the constant times the derivative of the function. So basically when you're differentiating a function you can ignore the constant coefficient in front of it. And then if we have two functions added or subtracted from each other, or you know, you can have more than two also, then to take the derivative of the sum of those, you can differentiate each function individually and then add them all up at the end. So here we have, we want to differentiate 10x to the 7th plus 6x cubed. So the first thing we can do is split the derivative into, for each individual term. So we're going to take the derivative of this term and add it to the derivative of this term. And then we can move the constants out of the derivative operator because we can ignore the constants while differentiating. And then we just differentiate these and then multiply them by the constants again and add them up. Right, so next, what if we have the product of two functions? 
So let's say we have two functions u and v. So the derivative of this of this equation is going to be u times v prime plus v times u prime. So you take the derivative of the second term and leave the first, then plus you know, leave the second term and take the derivative of the first term. Or you can do it the other way. It doesn't matter. You can take the derivative of the first term and leave the second plus leave the first, take the derivative of the second. Now to to see how this rule came about, we can use the definition of a derivative to find the derivative of uv. So we want to find the so at u0 and v0, you know, the value is y0. And then we see when we change it to plus delta u and plus delta v, then y0 is going to change by delta y. Now, so we expand this expression out. And then we can subtract this from this expression to get rid of the u0, v0 term. So we just have three these three terms. And then we divide by delta x to get this. And then, then we take the limit of delta, as delta x approaches 0 of both sides. So of course, the left side, the limit is the derivative of y with respect to x. And then, so remember, for limits, we can break it up. If we have the sum of some functions, we can break up the limits individually. So let's look at the first term. The first term, and also, if we have the two things being multiplied, then we can also split up the limit individually. So the limit as delta x approaches 0 of u0 is just u0 because u0 is a constant. But the limit as delta x approaches 0 of this is you know, the derivative of v with respect to x. And then likewise, the limit of this term is the derivative of u with respect to x multiplied by v0, a constant. And then the third term, we split it up into multiplication. So the limit, this limit is the derivative of v, but this limit is 0. Because as delta x approaches 0, then delta y, I mean delta u, has to approach 0 as well. Remember that this property must be true if u is going to be a continuous or differentiable function. So we can also ex extend this product rule into you know, products of more than two functions. So if you have more than two functions, then the derivative is just going to have more terms. So for example, if you have three terms, the derivative will have three terms as well. And in each term, you take the derivative of one function and leave the others alone. And so you keep doing this until you've taken the derivative of each of these functions. So you know if you have five functions being multiplied, your derivative will have five terms. Each one has the derivative of one function and the other four are left alone. So for a quotient of two functions, then the, the rule is a little more complicated. So if we have y equals u over v, where u and v are functions of x, then the derivative is going to be, so on the numerator, you have, you leave the bottom, take the derivative of the top, minus, leave the top, take the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. So, if we want to look at the definition of a derivative, you know, same thing, we find delta y by subtracting these two. And then we can combine these fractions, you know, simplify the expression a bit, and then we can divide by delta x. And you know, if we divide both sides by delta, delta x, we can put all the delta x's on like this. And so then, as we take the limit as x approaches delta x approaches zero, you know, the, the numerator will turn into, you know, v times u prime minus u times v prime. And then the the bottom, 
Yeah, this term v0 squared is a constant, so the limit is just, it stays the same. But this term over here approaches 0 because as delta x approaches 0, delta v approaches 0. Again, because it's a continuous and differentiable function. So let's look at two examples using the product rule and the quotient rule. So here we have this function which is a product of these two expressions. And no, notice if we wanted to multiply this out, then we could do that and then just differentiate normally. But it would be faster to use the product rule. So we label one as u and the other as v. And so the derivative, we leave the first, di differentiate the second, plus differentiate the first, and leave the second. And again, you could do it in the opposite order if you wanted to. Now, for quotient rule, so the top is x squared plus 3, the bottom is 2x minus 1. So we leave the bottom, differentiate the top, minus leave the top, differentiate the bottom, and then all over the bottom squared. Then you could simplify these if you wanted to. So notice how in the product rule, you know, the order doesn't matter. You could do you can have u prime plus v, I mean, u prime times v plus u times v prime, or the order that's shown here. But in the quotient rule, the order does matter. You do have to do, you know, leave bottom derivative of top first, and then minus derivative of bottom times leave the top. You can't switch that order in the quotient rule. So some of these properties that we talked about also apply to integration. So in integration, if you have a constant coefficient in front of your function, then you can move it out and ignore it while integrating, and then multiply it back in later, just like differentiation. And also, if you have the integral of the sum or difference of two functions, or multiple functions, then you can split it apart into the individual integrals of each function. So, you know, let's say we're going to integrate this expression, 3x cubed minus 5x to the 1 half power. So first we can split up the integrals, and then we move the constants outside of the integral. Then we integrate these x to the powers, multiply the constants back in, and then we add c at the end. So, when we add this c at the end of integration, we're, basically what we're saying is that any possible integral of the original function can be obtained by finding one, you know, one specific integral and then adding a constant. So all possible integrals of one function differ only by a constant. This expression here, that, so all the antiderivatives of this function here can be obtained by adding some constant to this one here. So all the integrals will have this basic form, you know, 3 fourths x to the fourth minus 10 thirds x to the 3 half power. And then so we just add a constant to get any possible integral of this function. 